Welcome to the University of Michigan Dentistry Podcast Series, promoting oral health care worldwide. The scaling and root plating of the mandibular teeth are accomplished in much the same manner as used in the maxillary quadrants. The subgingival surfaces of tooth number 19 surveyed with a number 3 explorer to determine the extent of subgingival calculus. The mesial surface is then scaled for the number 6 bunting curette. Notice the powerful lever action used to dislodge the hard subgingival calculus. Scaling is extended to the buckle and distal buckle surfaces. A relatively clear operative field is maintained by intermittent suctioning. The scale areas are now explored for residual calculus. Note that the explorer tip is passed gently over the cemento enamel junction in an apical direction. A number 16 periodontal file is used to smooth the cemento enamel junction, the mesial, and the buccal root surfaces. After clearing the operative field, the distal and distal buccal surfaces are filed. It is not enough to just remove the calculus. The root surface must also be planed until it is smooth. Rechecking with the explorer revealed residual calculus in the deep mesial pocket. A number 11 hole is effective for removal of this deposit. After complete removal of calculus has been assured, the surface must be planed. A number 14 Columbia curette is utilized for this purpose. The lingual surfaces of this tooth are now surveyed. Scaling in this area is accomplished with a number 13 Columbia curette. Notice the secure finger support that is employed. Short, well-controlled strokes are used to dislodge the tenacious subgingival calculus. mild amount of hemorrhage during this procedure is unavoidable. The scale surfaces are again surveyed with an explorer for residual deposits. The rough cemento enamel junction is smoothed with a number 15 periodontal file. After checking the surface with an explorer, final planing is accomplished with a number 13 curette. Prior to scaling and root plating, tooth number 25, iodine solution is applied because vigorous instrumentation will be necessary to remove the hard subgingival calculus in the deep periodontal pockets. The number one bunting scaler is used in this area.
This is a strong instrument which can withstand the powerful strokes required to dislodge the adherent deposits of calculus. Extreme care must be exercised to avoid traumatizing the soft tissues. The tooth surfaces are checked for residual calculus with a number 17 explorer. The cemento enamel junction and root surfaces are smoothed with a number 16 periodontal file. Short, well-guided apical strokes are used. After checking the root surfaces with the explorer, final smoothness is ensured by planing with a number one sickle scaler. Dense, hard calculus deposits are readily apparent on the lingual surface of the tooth. Due to the vigorous instrumentation required to remove these heavy accumulations, the strong number one bunting scaler is employed. If a more delicate instrument was used, time would be wasted and the instrument might be broken. Careful clearing of the operative field to include removal of dislodged calculus particles must be maintained. The operator must constantly be aware of the necessity for proper finger bracing and support. After each scaling, filing and planing procedure, the surfaces are checked with an explorer. A number 18 periodontal file is used to smooth the cemento enamel junction and root surface. Finally, surface planing is accomplished with a number one sickle scaler. In order to demonstrate instrumentation and finger positions for the right mandibular segment, tooth number 28 will be scaled and planed. The initial exploring of tooth surfaces is performed. A number 15 bunting curette dipped in iodine solution is used to scale the mesiobuccal, buccal, and distobuccal surfaces. Notice finger positions and the firm instrument support that is employed. After scaling, the surfaces are checked with a number one explorer. Roughness, detected at the cemento enamel junction, is smoothed with a number 16 periodontal file. Again note the finger bracing and the short, deliberate strokes. Difficult access to the distal buccal surface dictates the use of a number 18 file. Final smoothness is accomplished with a number five curette. Subgingival deposits are detected on the lingual surface and a number 14 Columbia curette is employed to remove them. Short, well-guided strokes are used. Some of these deposits can be extremely tenacious. A residual piece of calculus is found on the distolingual surface. This is removed with a curette. Finally, the cemento enamel junction is smoothed with number 16, 
and number 18 periodontal files. The number 18 file is used on the distal lingual surface, which presents an access problem. The tooth surfaces are explored, and no areas of roughness can be detected. Postoperatively, after all teeth were scaled and planed, the gingiva regained its normal color, consistency, and surface texture. All forms of local irritation must be eliminated in order to attain satisfactory results from this treatment. You've been listening to a presentation from the University of Michigan School of Dentistry, which is dedicated to supporting open learning and open educational resources. This recording is licensed under the Creative Commons. It may be reused and redistributed for nonprofit use. Please attribute materials to the University of Michigan School of Dentistry and redistribute under this same license. For more information on how this and other University of Michigan School of Dentistry recordings may be used, visit www.dent.umich.edu license.